In this video, I'd like to try and explain two terms that are widely used in music technology. Those are sampling rate and bit depth. So anytime you start a new project in your favorite DAW, like Cubase or Sonar, you'll have to specify those two parameters. And similarly, when you buy a new sound card interface, you'll see those two mentioned. So what do they actually mean? Suppose you have some sound source, it could be a piano or a guitar, and it emits sound waves. Those sound waves travel forth and cause the membrane on your microphone to vibrate. This vibration is turned into an electrical signal, voltage, and is sent into a preamplifier, and from there into your sound card, where it undergoes analog to digital conversion. This process of converting your analog voltage signal into a bunch of numbers that your computer can understand involves two steps. In the first step, you sample your signal, and in the second, you quantize it. This analog to digital step is crucial because your computer can't store a continuous signal like voltage. It needs to store numbers and it only has a finite memory capacity. And these two steps, the sampling and quantization, allow it to basically record the incoming signal as a bunch of numbers. The quality of the sampling is determined by the sampling rate, and the quality of the quantization is determined by the bit depth. Let me show you what I mean. So here on the left, you can see the electrical voltage signal that I drew. It could be anything. It could be the piano or the guitar. And this signal gets, first of all, sampled. Now, sampling means just taking a few of the points along the curve. And how many points you take is determined by your sampling rate. Sampling rate is usually stated in hertz. And a sampling rate of, say, 10 hertz means you'll be taking 10 samples per second. And that means one sample per tenth of a second, which is 0.1 seconds. So every 0.1 seconds, you'll be taking one sample. And I've drawn this in this animation. So the samples are represented by the yellow dots. Basically, what you get at the other end of the sampler is just those dots. And you can play a game of connect the dots and get a shape that approximates but doesn't entirely match the original shape. Now, the higher your sampling rate is, the more points per second you record. And the lower the sampling rate, the fewer points you record. For example, if I set my sampling rate to 5 Hz, that means I'm taking just five samples per second. So that's half of what I took in the previous example. That's a sample every 0.2 seconds. So I'll be just sampling every other point from the previous example. So I could play the same game again, just taking the sampled points and drawing a line between them. And once again, I'll get a shape that approximates but doesn't really match the original. And the lower my sampling rate, the worse this shape is going to look. Now, there are two things that I'd like to say at this point. First of all, modern sound cards usually sample at a rate that is at least 44.1 kilohertz. So that's a kilo is a thousand. So 44.1 kilohertz means 44,100 samples per second. That's quite a staggering number. Most cards today sample at a rate of 96 kilohertz. So you can imagine these crude drawings that I actually shown you in these slides really look a lot more like the original waveform at these high sampling rates. Now it turns out that once you sample at say at least 40 or 50 kilohertz, then you can actually reconstruct the original waveform perfectly. Sampling under 40 kHz introduces distortion into your signal known as aliasing, and I'll hopefully talk about it in an upcoming video. Once your signal has been sampled, it gets quantized. Now, quantizing is similar to rounding off. 
So suppose you had you know, $11.57 in your pocket. And suppose someone asked you, how much money do you have? So you might round it off to the nearest dollar and say $11. And you might round it off to the nearest tens of dollars. So you might say, well, I only have $10. You just round off this extra $1.57. So that's quantization, basically. And the amount of rounding off is determined by the bit depth. The higher your bit depth, the less rounding off you do. So the coarsest level of quantization is one bit quantization, in which case you round off your vertical axis into two possible values, say, I'll call it plus and minus. Now, obviously, this is a very coarse level of quantization. If I would just play connect the dots, I would get a shape that really doesn't resemble at all the original shape. The next level of quantization is 2-bit quantization. In this case, you round off your results into a set of four numbers. So adding a bit doubles the number of possible levels that you have. So we had two before, now we have four. And you can see that if we apply quantization in this case and play connect the dots, we end up getting a shape that is slightly better, but it still looks pretty bad. The next level of quantization is 3-bit quantization, and now we have 8 levels. Remember, adding a bit doubles the number of levels, and once again we round off our values along the vertical axis to the nearest level, and play connect the dots. And we can see that you know, it's not perfect yet, but it's getting there. We can just compare the quantized signal to the original signal and see that they're not identical, but they're starting to look similar. 4-bit quantization has 16 levels. That's twice the number of levels of 3-bit quantization. And in this case, the situation is even better. We can quantize and play connect the dots and once again compare the two results. And we'll be able to see that it's even better this time. So the more bits we add, the better our quantization becomes and the more similar it becomes to the original signal. Modern cards use 16-bit or 24 bits of quantization, which means 16 bits corresponds to just about 65,000 different values. You know, compare that to the measly 16 values we have at 4 bits. And 24 bits means you have over 16 million different values. So those are quite staggering numbers and they're more than enough to make sure that your quantized waveform resembles the original waveform. So let's sum up. The analog to digital conversion is basically made out of two steps, sampling and quantization. And the fineness of the sampling is determined by the sampling rate. The higher your sampling rate, the more points you take along the time axis. And the quality of your quantization is determined by the bit depth. The more bits you have, the more levels you quantize to. And that means the more your quantized signal will resemble the original. So modern cards work at such high rates that the human eye simply won't be able to tell, in most cases, the difference between the voltage, say, as measured on an oscilloscope, and the quantized and sampled signal. And the evidence to that is that a regular CD has music sampled at 44.1 kilohertz and at 16 bits, and it basically sounds fantastic. That's it for now. Thanks for joining, and I hope to see you next time.